do I want to condone this? I'll tell you what I do, and then I'll also say you don't do this. But <laughs> Pepper jelly, avocado, egg, cheese. You could put everything but the bagel seasoning. Ham would probably be Mayo. Bacon. So bacon, good. Bacon. 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 Yeah, bacon is a must. Yeah. I thought that was assumed. Yeah. But if you want to be a praised woman in the Mennonite community, it's not about your like looks or your fashion it's about taste. Your it's about your cooking skills. And you're like famous. And everybody's like, bring that. Bring, yeah. you know, if you, um, but I learned to do this back when I was a young homemaker because I would plan to make something. And then here I didn't actually, I had baking powder, not baking soda or like whatever. Um, so that's a habit I've always done. And I think you should try it. As previously mentioned, I'm a messy cook. So the Pauls are messy and I'm like grabbing my doors and then they're messy. And then when I grab the flour canister out with my dirty hands, then that's dirty. Yeah. I'm just a hot mess in the kitchen. <laughs>
so so delicious and like chocolatey and i'm gonna try that so good and you know how sometimes when you make an iced coffee like i like mine so like sweet and decadent and milky they're not much color to them but when you add the mo- the oh. cocoa powder to it it's nice and rich and brown yeah. and oh, it's just so delicious then you can garnish it with some cocoa powder and cinnamon if you want but try it think of me high five me in your head it's good That's a good <laughs> i did idea. not invent it i'm sure but i yeah anyway oh my favorite is this lotion this winter and i don't know if it comes from wearing leggings all winter or what but my legs were in bad shape i put lotion on every time I shaved every time I got out of the shower, if I shaved, and I could not get rid of that scaly looking skin. It didn't feel dry, but it, it was, <laughs> sorry. So my legs look so ugly and scaly. So I searched, I think I searched like the best lotion for legs or something on Amazon and that came up and I was like, well, I'll try it. It cured my problem. I love it so much. I love the fact that you can use it on your face, your whole body. So I use it on my face, on my legs. I love it. Nice. It's great. It's not fragrance. So I yeah. feel like I've been looking for a good lotion specifically for my legs for ever since I started shaving. And I feel like this one is finally it. Yeah. I'm a scaly girl too. So yeah, I have to try it. It's like Walmart, right? I have no idea. You I got it Amazon, on Amazon. But yeah. I, I mean, La Roche-Posay or whatever. I've I had never heard, heard of the brand until I bought it. And then after I bought it, I saw someone sharing about it. I was like, oh. Yeah. No, people- I think it's like dermatology backed and everything. Yeah, it so. says it is. So. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for the advice. I actually think that would <laughs> apply to me. I'm not an oily person at all. Like, no. I'm very dry and scaly. Yeah. So let's start with a joke. Your brother's joke. Where does a woman <laughs> belong? Or no, what, what are his jokes? His jokes are all... In the kitchen. Why, why did the woman cross the road? <laughs> she did, because she was in the kitchen. Like, <laughs> he has all kinds of snarky jokes about how a woman's place is in the kitchen. Yes. Like, he's 100% joking, but it's pretty hilarious because... Yes. You know what? A woman who is in the kitchen cooking, her family's going to rise up and call her blessed mm-hmm. for sure. You know, you can make a lot of friends through food. So yes. anyway, today we thought this would be a fun... I don't know, podcast to pop into your earphones or whatever while you're working in the kitchen or doing something tedious. Or maybe you're like husking corn or doing some other menial task. So I don't know. This will be a fun conversation and hopefully spark some ideas for you. So first of all, I thought we could talk about what is our relationship with cooking in general. In general, I like it. I get burned out sometimes and don't have any inspiration. But in general, I find it very relaxing to prepare a meal for my family I feel like food is love so not only do I love preparing food most of the time I also really like when people make food for me (laughs) like whether it's a meal when I'm going through a hard time or baby meals in the past or whatever I just feel like food is love yeah 100% that's true um I would say for me my biggest struggle with it is like I will see all these yummy Pinterest or you know what I just made a you whip it up, a baked oatmeal with um, like bananas, no sugar in it. The bananas are the sugar and then there's chocolate chips, mm-hmm. of course. But you actually put it all in the blender and you blend up the oatmeal. So it's like a whole different texture. But anyway, it was a reel I saw on Instagram and I saw it like a Tuesday night and I made it Wednesday morning. And like that was so fun. I had all the ingredients there and everything. And I was just like, wow, look at me. I made something new and I think it might be a new family favorite. But so many times it doesn't work out that mm-hmm. way. You see something that looks good. You're like, I'm going to make that. You go to the ingredient list and you have to buy all this stuff that you don't keep on hand and you end up using a fourth of it and it goes bad. And I just feel like it's not always economical to make the things that I want to make. And so I end up just sticking to like the tried and trues and then I'm sometimes in a rut. And then that's when I don't really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so I would say if I have time for it, I enjoy it. And baking, I would like bake just for fun while my kids were napping and the rain was falling and stuff. If I could, you know, if I'm in the mood, sometimes it's just like, I want to bake and then put it in the freezer or give it away or whatever. But I definitely love cooking more than baking. Okay. I feel like you can be more creative and you don't have to follow people's rules so much. You know, we need to differentiate our personalities here very quickly. I am a measurer. She is a dumper eyeballer. That's why I don't like baking (laughs) because it never works for me because I don't follow the directions. She thinks it's not directions. It's it's just suggestions. It's guidelines. and Yeah, it's just a suggestion and it's not. It's too technical for me. I don't like to color inside the lines. But I made this delicious thing for supper and dinner and dish pasta dish oh yeah you can't say supper eric always corrects you yeah he will um anyway and i was like oh i'm gonna try to like 
made, I didn't use a recipe. I just did it. I was like, I'm going to try to write down the steps and share this on Honey, I'm Homemaker Instagram since I'm all about that these days. Yes, and follow I us over there. Jada is popping off. So <laughs> frustrated. Like, I was like, I can't do this because I would write things down and I'd be like, oh, they're going to want to know how much. Well, I don't know how much I put in it. And then they're going to want to know, like, on what temperature, how long I cooked that. Well, I don't know. I just cooked it until it did this or until it looked like this. And, and then I was trying to take pictures of some stuff. And I'm like, this is just not going to work. I just want to eat the food. Like, this is not working for me. What was it again? It was, I took zucchini and onions and sauteed that up until it was mushy and then added heavy cream. Sounds and then <laughs> cooked Alfredo and... Alfredo, no, no, fettuccine noodles. So I made like an Alfredo sauce with the zucchini in it, but the zucchini kind of like melts and you don't even like notice that it's in there and you add that to the Alfredo sauce. So and like then I put shrimp with it and garlic and it was phenomenal. And your kids ate it. Finley did like zucchini I think they well, were my family won't touch it with a 10-foot pole and it's so sad because I have some in my fridge right now that's probably gonna end up going bad because I found a recipe on reels that I thought oh they'll eat that it try the better. pasta thing they might my boys didn't say anything about the zucchini I used lots of fresh herbs too which they like so yeah. I think they thought it was just they didn't really think notice it and I think they weren't super hungry because we had been at the pond so then they came home and snacked yeah, Finley yeah. ate his most of it so I feel like if they were hungrier they would have eaten it but I thought it was one of the best things I ever ate. Yeah. I think like for me, I like to cook and like, I don't, I use my, like the teaspoon measuring thing in your hand. Like I use that trick. Tablespoons, it eh, depends what it is. I'm not going to do that. Baking soda, 100% measure it. Yeah. Baking I, powder, I 100% that. measure it. All that stuff. But for myself, if I'm not going to use a recipe, well, the backstory to this is one time I made some dirty fried rice. Is that what you call it? Like fried rice it was like dirty rice and it, it was so good Josh looked at me afterwards he's like that was the best meal I think we've had in like forever a really long time he's like make that again and I like looked at him and I'm like I don't know what I did I just like kind of dumped in this and that and whatever oh my word so I was craving it again like a month later tried to make it didn't get the same and I learned my lesson from then on I often when I'm gonna cook I write down my plan like what I'm gonna do um, that way if it turns out good I can share it with you guys I can make it for my family again whatever like I often even with baking I'll combine like this icing with that you know whatever and like roll it up and do different things with it and you stuff. know but like keep a documentation of it so it's actually a helpful useful thing later on if that's it what I was out. trying to do but that's what I should have done was wrote it first like made a plan and stuck to it and then that would be my recipe and but then you just reach over and I didn't write two instead of one yeah I didn't know what up. I was gonna do next I mean I just yeah as the spirit led, that's what I did. I yeah. mean, I even reserved. But you enjoyed the process way more if yes. you weren't trying to write it down. I like reserved pasta water to add back in to like it's just loosen like an the art. sauce. Yeah. Yeah. And it tasted like love. <laughs> it was delicious. Wow. Anyway, so that's that's our two um, cooking philosophies, if you will. Yeah. But anyway, um, do you eat, does your family, anybody in your family eat a specific way? No, no allergies or sensitivities that we know of or like dairy restrictions. I try to eat low carb or cook like without extenuous amounts of carbs, but no, no like fast, hard and fast rolls or anything. And I would say I just cook like I'm used to or like I grew up, except I try to watch like all the refined bread, like not as much. I try to buy like the good bread if I buy it or make it even um not as often as I would like but like just stay away from all like the white you know rolls and stuff as much as possible but it doesn't happen very much and also like the seed oils I try to avoid when I can I use avocado oil and coconut oil but other than that we have no dietary restrictions praise the lord yeah um I don't know how some of you women do it that have like one kid who's gluten-free and another one who's dairy intolerant and like all this that stuff. sounds impossible to me oh, like my that goodness. sounds so I know it just hard. becomes a way of life after a while but wow anyway yeah so neither of us we we are both very privileged in that department yeah yeah absolutely so I thought maybe this next section we could go through like maybe some pantry staples go back and forth and like just go to meals and things we go to when we are in a rut or not in a rut <laughs> the go-tos are, are what create the rut <laughs> um but yeah like just the easy stuff when we're in a pinch you're in a rush and yeah I think one thing that I always keep in my fridge that my mom never did was is is heavy whipping cream yeah I either I have that or that in our fridge or half and half okay. they're not they're not like you can't do I everything used to do half can. and half but the, it's so much less diverse yes so and now I just buy the heavy whipping cream because it lasts longer and um I can use it for more things I just use it so fast with my coffee that it's more expensive so I just you 
get half and half, but sometimes I get heavy cream. Gotcha. Yeah. I've frozen it already. Um, it doesn't, you have to use it for cooking then afterwards. Yeah. Um, also like with heavy whipping cream, you can always like turn it into butter yes. or like whip topping and then freeze the whip topping. That freeze is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I used to, I used to always be like buying like the, the pint wasn't enough pint. Yeah. Yeah. So I would buy like the quart and then half of it would go bad. But anyway, that's one thing I always have on hand and avocados. I never grew up eating avocados. And right now I have like six avocados sitting in my fridge ready to be used. Ivani's been begging for avocado toast. So. Nice. I wouldn't say I keep them on hand. That's more of like a, if I have something in mind that I'm hungry for that I want to have avocados, but we love them. Or me and Eric do. I guess I, what I should say by keep them on hand is I usually have some like starting to ripen it's usually like 50 percent of my time i actually have an avocado that's yeah, ready to eat but you buy them regularly i wouldn't say i buy them regularly um no i do go in spurts i guess like more often than not um i always have waffle mix like the just add water waffle mix which i know i know i can make it from scratch and it's better but it's such an easy breakfast for the boys just mix a little with water put it in my little individual waffle maker so that's something i always keep on hand potatoes are so versatile i always have potatoes on hand oh i don't always they could they go bad on me yeah i, I try to i mean sometimes there was I don't, nothing but... i was craving more the other day than a baked potato it was yes. the oddest thing and then i was like but i don't have any broccoli or like cheese or ham or anything to put on it but i'm like i just want butter salt and pepper i'm happy that, there's something <laughs> about a good baked potato yeah, I love them. I'd forgotten they existed. I need to do that more. My kids love like the pasta bar where I like make pasta and then I have like sausage and then like spinach and mushrooms and like pizza sauce and cheese and they like make a mess and make their mm-hmm. own like pasta and we put it in the oven. But I'm like a baked potato bar. That would go over good with them, I feel. We had that when we were camping, chili and baked potatoes oh, and broccoli and cheese sauce. Thing. I don't and... like chili, so oh. but Josh loves it. Like he'd be really happy if I Chili made it. is one of my go to meals when I don't know what else to make. Oh, wow. I've made it once in my life and Josh deemed it not as good as his mother's and so I Ooh. said, Well, you're never getting that again from me. And yeah, especially if that. you don't like it. <laughs> and yeah. I always have rice and various kinds of pasta, canned beans. No. I, I, like... I don't ever have a canned bean. Really? In my life. I always do. No. Ew, how do you eat them? I hate beans. <laughs> Like uh, kidney not, beans? No, there's not one way. Like, I like taco beans. soup, chili. How else do I use them? The one time I liked, I, there was white beans and a green chef meal one time. It was like a, a soup, a tortilla soup, and it was like a spicy white chili thing. Oh that yeah, that was good. A white chicken chili. But I have to admit, I like put half the beans in it called for. I, I'm not a bean person. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like to have all variety or a lot of varieties of frozen protein, like chicken, beef, pork. Do you buy that all in bulk? I try to, but sometimes that doesn't always hold out. Do you get a Not quarter, chicken, I don't. Do you get like a part of a cow from my parents or Charlie? Sometimes. We have. We get them from various people. Eric's brother-in-law sometimes has them. So We always have like half of a beef in our freezer. But then my chicken, I'm always watching for chicken sales. Like, yeah. I wish I could just have my chicken in there too. But yeah. if I want to do chickens, it's for my mom and there are whole chickens. And then a whole chicken is one thing. Like there's only about one thing yeah. you can do with it. I mean, there's a hundred recipes you can do with a whole chicken, but like it's not as easy. Sometimes as you want chicken breast or chicken thighs. Yeah. yeah. So I'm always watching for sales Same. on that. Oh, maple syrup. Do you, for my do you keep scrapple around? No. Do you guys know what scrapple Eric is? Eric wishes. If I buy scrapple, we eat it right away because Eric loves it, it so much. It is good, but it's just, it's questionable meat. And I have a feeling like it is not good for you at all. So Probably not. I don't really keep it on hand, but I'm also the woman that like buys Spam once in a while because it is so good. If you never tried a Spam toasted cheese sandwich, don't even try it. It's like in the top 10 food group. It's it's so good. It was like a Hawaiian recipe, I think, but you fry the Spam nice and crispy and then you make your toasted cheese sandwich with the crispy Spam inside it. Oh, I can't believe I'm talking about Spam on a food on this little, um, <laughs> podcast. Bad as me and I'm hot very, dogs. yeah, you and hot dogs, me and Spam. That's terrible. But I buy it like once a quarter. I buy pork roll sometimes, which I feel like is very similar to ham. Is it not? I do not like pork roll, but okay. Josh does. Spam. Oh, yeah. He likes to fry it up and then have it alongside eggs. Yeah. My mom used to make Spam peas and potato casserole, yeah, my mom which too. I'm not going to lie. I liked. Oh, you liked it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I did too. My mom would do green beans, then I really liked it. But mm. anyway, yeah. Um, waffle mix, I don't – I have a standard Amish waffle recipe that I make sometimes, but then I don't make them as often because make them, it's not mixed up and ready to yeah. go. Just add water, you know? Finley I should just to, mix yeah. it up and have it sit there. Yeah. But then I have to still add the egg. 
and the oil so never mind it wouldn't work <laughs> finley wants waffles almost every day so yeah my kids it is baked oatmeal and parfaits they do a lot of oatsy things like jack granola loves and- granola and yogurt yeah. Can't get them to put any fruit on it. No, what's up with that? I don't I'd be like, know. this is strawberry season, girl. Peach season. Like, put fruit on. Nope. I don't I don't get it. They'll eat the fruit plain, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> egg sandwiches, which we kind of already talked about, but they are a go-to. Bacon, egg, and cheese on English muffin. Do you ever do them for supper? Yes. Okay. Often, when I don't know what else to make. Okay. I need to remember to do that more when it's like, oh, man, I need a quick supper. Like, eggs are always at my disposal, you know? Yeah. You know, you make pepper jelly, right? I did one time. Put that on your egg sandwich. Experience. What? So good. It's sweet. Yes. Mine's not super duper spicy. I don't care. Try it. So say this again. Pepper jelly, avocado, egg, cheese. (sighs) You could put everything but the bagel seasoning. Ham would probably be mayo. Bacon. So bacon. 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 Yeah, bacon is a must. I thought that was assumed. Yeah, but (laughs) so good. Yeah. Eric loves it. I, yes, pepper jelly. You can buy it, but the canned stuff is the best. Your it's mom, so I easy think to I use your mom's too. recipe. Yeah. Or it's the recipe on the, in the sure gel yes. box. Oh, potato soup is another thing I make when I'm not sure. My, I have a, I, I, okay, I love soup. My kids and my husband are like iffy about it. They like cheeseburger soup and then like one night. And when I make it, it's like enough for three or four people. Yes, it feels like. I know. And then they get sick of it. So I have like a love-hate relationship with soup. I love it, but the work to make it, it always feels like so much. So I also feel like I don't have the ingredients for it. Like there's like two things I don't have every time. But see, that's when you just substitute and wing yeah, it. But and nobody do wants without. noodles in their creamy. No, potato you have soup. to have potatoes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And like yeah. I don't always have potatoes on hand. I need to start. They just go bad because I don't use them fast enough. So. They do go bad quick quicker than I think they should. Yeah, maybe I'm not storing them correctly, but I have them in a dark, dry place. So I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Maybe just buy smaller amounts more often. Yeah. Another thing I like to do with soup, if you have, okay, I have a very complicated Italian wedding soup recipe. I think it's on my website. Um, It is so delicious. And I know I've shared it on different blogs before, but it's so much work. You have to little, you have to make, you have to make little mini meatballs and it's just, it's just a lot of work. And so if I make it, I try to do like a double batch and I will, do I want to, condone this I'll tell you what I do and then I'll also say you don't do this but (laughs) anyway I will take it and while it's still really hot I will ladle it into quart jars like mason jars and screw the lids on tight right away and they seal I mean they do seal Mm -hmm. but then I put them in my fridge and I leave them there for like a month and I just they never last a month let's be honest but you know I'll have one right away and then there'll be two or three sitting in the fridge and they last way longer than that like the soup lasts way longer that way I've done that and I've put the jars right into the freezer Oh, the freezer. That would work too. And I just feel yeah. like when you once you freeze it, the texture's off. Yeah. Especially with potatoes. I feel like pasta it works a little better. Well, there's like... But yeah, yeah, your fridge idea, I think, is sound. I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you, whatever. But my mom always did that and I had never gotten sick. So I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to do it too. But um, yeah, make a bigger batch and then freeze it. That would be a good, more food safe solution. <laughs> <laughs> Taco salad, we have a lot. The boys don't eat the lettuce usually, but they'll do yeah, rice and beans. Yeah, taco salad is my kid's favorite thing. Yes, we love it too. I don't like the chili part, like the meat, the chili meat part. So I usually just make a salad for myself. But like, You don't like taco meat? No, I don't like taco seasoning. Seasoning. No. I like Mexican cooking, but like that, that taco seasoning, I just do not like it. I don't know, which I'm sure you can make your own, whatever, but... Yeah, Ivani came in from school and was begging for taco salad. Josh loves taco salad. Yeah. And, like, you can also, like, do tortillas the first night and then taco salad the next night with a lot of the same ingredients yeah. and stuff. And it's so customizable. Actually, I think people say it's a gluten-free meal that you can serve if you have people over. Oh, yeah. Um, because I think the tortilla chips, are they gluten-free? I think so. Or you can buy gluten-free or, I don't yeah. know, maybe the corn chips are the ones that are gluten-free. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But, yeah, I've heard that that's a really good recipe if you're cooking for somebody who's gluten-free. And, yeah, super customizable. Do you guys do dessert? Mm, the boys think that we should every night but usually we don't i've been trying to have like ice cream on hand um so if they want something sweet they can but no as a rule we don't have dessert every night yeah no nearly um i feel like growing up my mom my mom baked regularly because she was packing our lunches so Mm -hmm. she'd go through like three whoopie pies a day or like you know whatever um so when i bake it's usually just to have stuff on hand for last minute like cookouts and stuff or it's for something that's already planned yeah um and then josh used to like bake goods in the morning but now i mean he can get whatever he wants where he works and so i think a lot of the time he just 
waits and eats later and has like a smoothie or something. I don't know. He doesn't go through baked goods like he used to. Um, and then in the evenings, we don't eat supper and then like, okay, here's your reward. You can have, you know. Yeah. Usually in the summertime, we're up later and so they're hungry before bedtime. So then we'll have like popsicles or smoothies yeah. or ice cream or something like that. Um, but yeah, Josh did not grow up. His family was not big on desserts. And my family didn't really do desserts. It was like ice cream. Yeah. Every night we had ice cream. Actually, my dad, his idea of Black Friday shopping was driving around to all the local Turkey Hills and getting his quota of like six boxes <laughs> no. that were like half price and putting them. He had an extra fr- like ice cream freezer, like a freezer my for word. just the ice cream. And then we would go down. The sad part was he would get enough that it's like, okay, this mom's like, this is going to last us like a good six months. And it would last us like two months because it was just there. And like, we knew it was there. Us married kids knew it was there. So we would come over and be like, so how about some waffles and ice cream? And like, we just went through that stuff so fast. I don't think their Black Friday Friday sales are near as good anymore. That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm just not a big, um, like I don't serve dessert with meals. When I grew up though, we always had butter and jelly on bread for like the appetizer before whatever we had oh, for supper. Oh yeah, no, we did not most of the time. That's like a Mennonite thing, I think. Like just the plain old sliced bread or sometimes mom made homemade bread, whatever. Butter and strawberry, homemade strawberry jelly. Yeah, like, no, that was not something we did often. Do you can at all? Um, Some. I view canning as like for fun and as I have like excess from my garden which isn't very much or if I see like a good deal on produce I'll can it I'm not very good at it I usually have to ask my mom for help she helps me a lot and I had something else oh I think the only preserving that is like way better than sorbot is corn like you Uh have to have corn so I make more of an effort to make sure that I preserve corn in the freezer but other than that I feel like I can take it or leave it if I feel like it if I have time if I want to I will but it's not something I want to get into it more I want to do more of it but just one of those things sometimes it's just really not cost effective honestly yeah and canned peaches are objectively better but I don't really eat like I eat peaches in peach season and that's about it right we don't eat a lot of canned I know like my kids love it and my kids love applesauce and but you can buy applesauce cheaper almost than you can make it but it's way better when you make it homemade and way healthier too yeah so I kind of just like mooch off of my mom and Josh's mom and be like oh, you're doing salsa? Let's do salsa. Yes. And like, I actually got the salsa recipe from my, from my friend that we use and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a collaborative effort. We usually get together for most things. The only thing I do myself is I've done corn myself, pepper jelly myself, and I can chicken in the oven myself as well. But I want to learn something new this year. But I'm like you. I kind of treat it like an arts and crafts project or something. Yes. And if it turns out, I'm superwoman, you know. Right. But yeah, I'm. I, oh man, do you ever did you ever watch Adeline Zook on YouTube? I've watched her some. I I love her weekly meal prep. She's videos. like a preserve preservation like queen. Like she just has everything. It's crazy. I'm like wow. I could see how that would be a very worthwhile hobby to have. Yes, I think so too. I admire people that do that. Yeah. So do you have like a specific grocery budget you try to stay under or anything like that? No. Or a rhythm for your grocery shopping? You just kind of go whenever you need to. Do you, yes. So like weekly? Yeah, usually weekly. Sometimes I can make it a week without getting any. Sometimes I go twice a week if we have weekend plans. I feel like summertime I'm going twice a week. Yeah. Plus the produce stand. Lately I've been going twice. If we have weekend plans, it's really hard to like plan out my week to last with the food that we have and then coordinate weekend things too that you can't buy at the beginning of the week. Yeah. I thought I hacked the system. My system was I go grocery shopping every Friday morning. And it was genius because then we're stocked up for the weekend. We have all this stuff. And then like, I don't know, is this a Mennonite thing or what? But like all the last minute plans in the summertime. I'm guessing that's everybody does that. Like just last minute, like, oh, we feel like doing something. Let's do something. You know, not committing ahead of time too much. And then it's like, well, I just went for groceries yesterday and now I committed to bring brownies or like something I didn't have or I don't know. And so brownies is a bad example. I always have brownies. (laughs) Right. Um, But... Yeah, so then I would end up going grocery shopping like two days in a row or something like that. But. I feel like when we go away, if I'm shopping for that, I can hardly also think through what I need for like the following week. It's just almost too much. And yes. then the bill gets so expensive. It's like if you, I almost have to just focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, what I've been doing with our camping weekends is I go like shopping on Wednesday usually and then Thursday I can prep the food, Friday pack and leave type of thing. And then by the time we get to Monday, we just live off of like the leftovers from camping Mm -hmm. and like stuff out of our freezer and things. Because trust me, I blew the budget every single time when we go camping. I don't know why. I'm in charge of like one meal and it's still like way more. 
I know. Like, it's explain to me. The math ain't math, and I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I often buy, like, special drinks and snacks yes, and stuff. So, I know. definitely. And I'm getting, like, the good creamer and the good, yeah. Yes. It's just, like, you want to treat your friends, and you don't want to be, like, the, the stingy, scroungy And person. you're buying paper supplies, too. That's Which, another cost. That's true. Yeah. It just, oh, I don't know. Beverages. We don't do beverages at home, but then when we go no, camping, right. you got to have chocolate milk, orange juice. I always figure it out. Breakfasts are actually more expensive almost than doing a supper, depending what you decide to do for your supper. It could be. I mean, if you're having brisket or something for supper, yeah, that's going to be more. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I used to try to keep it under $75. That was like back before 2020. Um, and then since then, I haven't really, I just try to be frugally minded and try to base our meals off of meat that we already have in our freezer. Yes. And so it's like $100 one week. And the next weekend, it's $200 because we're going camping. Pl- yeah, it's yeah. Just- I feel like if I place a grocery order or if I go to the grocery store, it's almost 100 bucks every time. Maybe not quite, but like 75 to 100 I can hardly get out of the grocery store if I'm going grocery shopping for less than that. Yeah, it's true. But then like this week, I'm going to skip groceries till Friday and I'm just going to go to the produce stand probably and get some sweet corn and a gallon of milk and just like we're going to scrap on maybe some bread and we'll just scrounge around and make meals out of like green beans and meat and green beans and yeah. like, you know, whatever. I spent Salad. $100 today? Or was that yesterday? Today on groceries for whatever we needed for the next... I mean, it's not all going to get eaten this week. Some stuff will carry over. Well, of course. Like, but I didn't get one single thing for this weekend. So I have to get, I'm doing like a baked potato bar, baked beans, and I'll probably get coleslaw because I don't feel like weekend? doing a lettuce salad to Jordan's parents' cabin. Oh, fun. with Jordan's parents and his whole family. Oh, yeah, you got to you got your your cooking got to be up to snuff with them. I know. They, they're used to their good food. I know. I feel <laughs> intimidated by Mama Sue. <laughs> so we go to the cabin with my sister's in-laws. So her kids have both their grandparents in the same cabin weekend. So it's really fun. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, wow. If you want to be a praised woman in the Mennonite community, it's not about your like looks or your fashion it's about taste. Your cooking. It's about your cooking skills. And you're like famous and everybody's like, bring that. Bring, yeah. You know, if you have a, a recipe you're famous for and people are asking for it. I've never had a recipe like that. I don't think. No, I don't I think I've either. But like, I have certain people in my life that they're famous for something specific, and like, then they always bring it or whatever. Yeah, I can't say I haven't. But I think they would either. get old after a while too. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, it is fun to cook, and then people appreciate it. Because yes. I feel like our kids, it's, just, it's not where it's at. Always. No, <laughs> no, my kids are so mean to me about food. I make them what I think is delicious. I'm like, this is disgusting. I hate this. <laughs> This is the worst thing I ever ate. It's like, well, you can't eat the same five things all the time. Exactly. You know? oh. So what do we mean by kitchen habits? What would you like to talk to, to everybody about with kitchen habits and rhythms? Oh, I would love to say I am the cook that cleans up as I go, but I am not. So, and I feel like it shouldn't matter because I'm the one who's cleaning it up. So if I want to make a big ginormous mess, then that's fine. So I'll it. clean it up. Who's I sometimes I feel like my mom's standing over my shoulder be like, wow, did you really have to make such a big mess when you did that? And I'm like, yes, yes, I did. I am the lady that has every single spatula out because I'll like forget it and throw it in the sink. And then oh, it's yeah. like, oh wait, well now it's dirty. It's in the sink. So get another one out again. But I don't know if YouTube taught me this. I kind of think I did this beforehand, but I will always get my kitchen tidied up before I clean if it's not already. And all my ingredients out and ready to go so I can physically see that I have everything. And, you know, when you're doing YouTube, then you take a shot of all your ingredients and stuff. Um, But I learned to do this back when I was a young homemaker because I would plan to make something. And then here I didn't actually – I had baking powder, not baking soda or like whatever. Um, So that's a habit I've always done. And I think you should try it whether you have a YouTube channel or not. Another reason to do that, I'm thinking here thinking that I don't do that and the reason why I should is that – as previously mentioned, I'm a messy cook, so the Pauls are messy, and I'm, like, grabbing my doors, and then they're messy, and then when I grab the flour canister out with my dirty hands, then that's dirty. Yeah. I'm just a hot mess in the kitchen. <laughs> I would say I do make pretty many dishes, not, like, kettles and things, but, like, the spatulas and the yeah. scrapers and things like that. And I – we talked about this before. I don't know. It's a whole new lifestyle to me, but I go through lots of rags, like, yes, you know, kitchen rags and stuff, and throw them in the wash and start over again the next day, yes. you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, as far as like kitchen rhythms and things, I, I definitely close up shop every evening in my kitchen. I don't leave dishes in the sink and stuff. I have a dishwasher. I have no excuse. I can put them into the dishwasher or wash the kettles and stuff. But I'm not a saint either because the rest of my house is not tidy. Like when I go to bed, I usually have no energy left and... 
I'll do it in the morning. But yeah. yeah, like my kitchen, I like to have the dishwasher going before I go to bed. So in the morning I can get up and unload it. I try to too. There may sometimes be a few dishes in the sink. And I feel like lately the house has been totally trashed when we go to bed. And we clean it up. Like we'll clean it up in the middle of the day since, you know, Jack's home from school and stuff. So they'll clean it up in the middle of the day and then by the time eric gets home it looks like we just lived in filth all day <laughs> and we didn't it was just the last three hours or whatever but then i'm not gonna clean it up again before we go to bed yeah, so i need just to work pounds. on that yeah yeah well I'll, i'm not gonna lie this morning i woke up and there was dried rice all over my kitchen floor because i was like i ain't picking up wet rice i'm just gonna s- knock it onto the floor let it dry up and sweep it up the next morning i've always been tempted to do that rice but I never is the actually, one for yes, sure exception it's the worst it's the worst like if you have sticky like jelly or like sauce or like meat dropped or anything rice is easier to clean up the next for day sure. i've never actually left it though i just couldn't bring myself to leave it for the next day i'm just a slob like that well the thing is you can't see it if i can't see it, it doesn't bother me as see, much my kitchen is like too we ate and left we ate and left yeah yeah, and your floor is dark, so you would easily. I feel see like it. my kitchen floor is usually somewhat. Yeah, if I was clean. stepping in it, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> if Josh was stepping in it, oh my goodness, that'd be the end of the world. <laughs> he would rather have a swept floor than a cleaned-up looking wife and all that. No, I don't think Eric would notice. It, the, I, I wonder how dirty the floor would have to be before he would notice it. Oh wow! No, that's like Josh's thing. That's so, so funny. Like, yeah, if I don't keep after it, he'll do it for me, and then I feel guilty. Nice. <laughs> I don't even know if Eric would know how to turn my vacuum on. I'm sure he would (laughs) figure it out. (laughs) It doesn't happen too often. But um, how do you get like food inspiration? Like, Um, I try to cook seasonally, like especially in the summer with what's in season. Um, I don't know, Instagram, what I see what other people are cooking. I hear my friends talking about what they made and then I'm like, oh yeah, that would be a good idea. Uh, And you're like craving it. We often (laughs) compare notes where like someone will be like, oh, I'm in a rut. What should we make for dinner? And everyone else is not and they have ideas Um, or basically what I'm hungry for, like what I feel like eating. Yeah, I know. I especially do what I feel like eating for lunches because Josh doesn't have the same taste buds I do and I'm like, I want my kids to have a more well-rounded palate so I'll make it for lunch and then... Sometimes they don't like it and they're like wanting a snack an hour later. But yeah, yeah, I will say like Instagram reels and like the TikToks and stuff, they get me like with food. It's like, oh, that looks so good. I save a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I usually don't actually go back and reference that sp- particular recipe. Or but it anything. gives you an idea. But it gave me an idea and I'll make my version of it. Right. Or like remember, oh, they did like the spicy chili oil or whatever. And I'll use that. Or, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> doing that when you're hungry is not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we already talked about grocery shopping and stuff. And do we need to say anything about, I mean, you're an Instacart girl. I like to shop in person. I do a um, lot of both, it feels like, these days. But I prefer to have my groceries delivered to my door. Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I love the produce stands, too. My goodness. Yes. So fun. What's your closest one? My closest one's, like, two minutes away. There is one called Country Basket that's right at the street. But it's, like, I think it's close enough to Reading that it's not really... I mean, it is in Reading. It's not Lancaster County. So I feel like their prices are just astronomical. Oh, like, I need to go the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, like, you need to, like, have a Joanger stand. Yeah, it's like, not cost effective at all. But I they see. also have milk and stuff there. So it's very convenient. Yes, yes. But it's not. Like, they were charging. I went there to buy fruit for this weekend. They wanted eight fifty for a quart of half-rotten strawberries. We, That's, like, a crime. I, awful. Yeah, I did not partake. I went to redner's and bought california not, strawberries or whatever i was like yeah. i just can't like that no. and i needed like three quarts i was like there is no way i would have been like 24 bucks i muttered under my breath the guy was sitting there was like sorry we're not paying 17 dollars for two quarts of strawberries and like i i the boys had wanted whoopie pies because they have those there too so we did buy two whoopie pies and we, we left <laughs> oh that's all you got <laughs> yeah oh that's funny and they wanted like eight dollars for a watermelon which it wasn't much less at redner's but yeah it's wow like ridiculous. yeah i mean all like farmers markets produce stands are not all created equally you have no. like the bougie trendy ones and then you have like the practical economical like real farmer types yeah this one is run by mennonites but it's too close to the city i think there it's the only one in the area so i think they can charge crazy sure. prices and then as they more should more power to them but as they should then. i should be going the other direction towards lancaster to get my produce for sure i just want to put a plug in for anybody who does not have a grill. I don't know if that's more of a local thing, like a Lancaster County thing. I'm not sure. Or maybe maybe everybody who's rural, rural has one. But we use our grill like so much in the summertime. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't know what to do without it. It's a very healthy way of cooking your food. 
I mean, unless you're putting all kinds of sauces on and stuff, but like grilled stuff gives such a good flavor without adding all kinds of calories. And then just do that and grill your asparagus or have corn on the cob or do like you don't need the three course meal or the four course meal or whatever. We right. often will have a meat and a veggie Same. or like our meat will end up being in a sandwich, like a bread thing, like yeah. sausage sandwiches and corn or, yeah. but sh- <sighs> corn is a grain, I guess, not really a vegetable, but yeah, like, you know, peas and yeah. sloppy joes or whatever. Right. That's a lot how we do too. We don't always have like. Do you do the grilling or does Eric? Um, I would say I do it if it's during the week. Like if it's on the weekend and we're having people over, he does it. But I'm, I, I my dad taught me how to grill when I was like really young, so I'm pretty Aww, good at it. I was not only I remember learning to make hot dogs at the age of twelve with all the little Dwanger boys biking by on their bikes and they would smell it and wave and like all that. <laughs> oh, it's, that's so core memories. Oh my goodness! But then after that, he didn't let us graduate onto burgers or steaks. Oh no, I think it's I just learned hot burgers. Dogs. <laughs> I mean, it was highly supervised, but we'd go out yeah. and start the grill and get it started, and then I think he usually helped us finish up. But no, I know how to grill. I know how to like yeah. Google how hot something should be inside and that kind of thing. But Josh is usually in charge, and then if he doesn't have time. I will do it or look it up or whatever. But yeah, I love grilling. Yeah, we base almost all of our recipes off of Traeger.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> do you have any favorite like cookbooks or anything that you want to recommend? Or websites that you like to find stuff? Um, Hope's Table is my go-to cookbook. There are so many recipes in there that I keep going back to because they're so good. Yeah, we can link that. It's on Amazon. That's a really good one if you don't want to have 50 million ingredients. Yes, like, yes. That's and honestly, her Instagram account, I think it's called Hopeful Things. She gives me a lot of good ideas too. Um, or I'll just like Google something and no particular website stands out. Yeah. That do you, do you really preserve like. your recipes in any way? Like, no, I throw them in the drawer and if I find them again, great. So you do print them out or sometimes, you write them out? Sometimes I do, but, uh, sometimes I just use my phone, which I absolutely hate cooking and using my phone for the recipe, but sometimes I just can't be bothered to print anything out. Yeah. I try to like, if, especially if I'm baking, I'll try to like print it out. That way if it's good, I have it and yes. everything. But um, I used to be much better at handwriting recipes down. Now I only do it if it's like, you know what? I've made this like 12 times now. I should probably like either print it out or write it down yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of like screenshots in my phone. That That's what I'm using. Yeah, I hate me nuts. cooking like that. Yeah, but well, it's... sometimes I'll write it down and then I can adjust and then I have my copy of what I did. Then it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but I don't know. That's probably also comes from like being a YouTuber and wanting to like make sure I know what I did, if it worked out or not. Yeah, well, today when I tried to do that YouTuber, not YouTuber, Instagram recipe, I was like, no, I don't know how these people do it. It was so overwhelming and I just scrapped. And I was like, no, like I'm just going to make people frustrated because I don't know how much or how high or how long. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You should have done a satirical. You should put it on Honey, I'm Homemaker. And make it satirical, like... And then have um, everyone follow exactly what I said and show how it's, like, 20 <laughs> different varieties. Yeah. Cook it till the edges are turning brown and your toddler is screaming. Then, yeah, you know, exactly. Whatever. Cook it until you're tired of cooking it. Cook it, cook it till you're ready to switch to your left arm, yeah. you know, to stir or yeah, whatever. Yeah, oh, it just was so not funny. going well. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, I hope this was some, a fun chat anyway. Hopefully you got some food in bro. You're probably hungry now, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Leave us down below. Um, I guess this is going out here in July. Yes. Um, What you've been cooking lately or what you are – I mean, I think – I can get really excited about like seasonal food, especially like fall pumpkin-y things and yeah. stuff like that. So not thinking about that yet. We're still in like the fresh produce season and all of that. So I'm going to be sad when that's over. Yeah, but always open for suggestions. Yeah, give us an idea down below. So yeah, hopefully you got some food inspo from that. And yeah, as always, thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.